What's going on guys, Don Ross with REI Automation Squad and BestDamnSalesCRM.com talking on AP2 compliance. Uh, put out a video just the other day with CallRail and submitting some of your information through them and what they require so that you can be uh, approved through uh, A2P 10 DLC registration, getting your phone numbers and campaigns approved so that carriers will allow you to text. It uh, does not matter if you're mass texting. This is virtual or VoIP uh, phone numbers being able to show or prove uh, that they've opted in to receive those text messages and have a way to opt out uh, from those messages and provide some of the uh, versions of those, you know, texts or campaigns, as they'll call it. Um, what does that look like? They're also going to want your uh, company information, things like a uh, address, typically an EIN number, unless you're a sole prop. And then you're going to provide uh, an email address, point of contact, and a website. Um, most of these, without reaching out to actual support, um, are going to require this. So it doesn't matter if it's CallRail, uh, Twilio, smartphone, or any of the other variations that are out there. Um, when you go through their prompts, it's going to ask for a website. You're going to have to prove on your website that you're asking for uh, opt-in, whether it's a web form or whether terms of service show it, you're going to have to prove it. So uh, today we're going to go through Twilio and just kind of show what they're requiring uh, to get some stuff approved. I'll provide some, I guess, guidelines, maybe a template of uh, what we're doing, and then um, we'll do some follow-up videos as to what we've uh, been given as feedback from Twilio and through the others. Um, right now, it is an uh, uh, interesting time to be trying to uh, weed through this stuff. Um, a lot of people submitted uh, the request for approval in July and August, got approved, and then September hit, and uh, some of those accounts were then disapproved uh, after already being approved. Uh, unfortunately, carriers are not uh, being super forthright and showing what they're expecting, uh, expectations and some of the different fields or forms uh, that they want filled out to approve you have changed at the last minute. And so now a lot of people, including myself, are having to go back through in September and fill out the information. So September 2023, here we are. We're going to go through some of the Twilio requirements. You can see here I've got up the email where they're talking about the drop dead date of August 31st. And that point forward, they're blocking your text messages unless you've got an approved campaign approved number. So let's go through this and uh, kind of show what it looks like. All right, once you get logged into your Twilio uh, council, you can go under the active numbers. You can see some of the um, messaging that they've got up at the top to let you know the A2P is required and you can generate a report um, to see kind of what's been approved, what hasn't been approved, and if there's any errors, what it is. So I'll go ahead and run the report and then I'll um, just show you what that looks like once it pops up here. All right, so here we go. Uh, view report, be able to get into the council again and see your report. Um, Simple as either generate or download. And then um, for me, I know that on this, it's gonna tell us that uh, we've got numbers that need to go through the uh, A2P. So you can see here, unregistered. We're gonna go through that process. Um, but you know, if you had any that you were waiting or pending, um, you could go in here and see if they are pending or um, registered and what that approval looks like. All right, so getting to the actual process itself of registering um, when you are in the Twilio Council under Active Numbers. I just happen to click on this Learn More About the Registration. Uh, you'll get a pop-up window that looks something like this. They're going to tell you about the registration, what error codes you're going to get when they cut you off, things of that nature um, that you can get more information on. Uh, you're going to need to know whether or not you're going to be using it with a tax ID or without a tax ID. And then are you a um, low use or high use? And so they determine that based off of uh, six thousand messages being sent per day. So you're either low volume, as they call it, uh, or standard. And that just depends on how many messages you're sending per day. So with that said, once you're kind of reading through this, figured out what it is that you're wanting to do, um, you can register in the council. So we're back here, A2, A2P registration. You can see here, we're going to pick the appropriate one. So prop is if you don't have the EIN, if you do have EIN, you're going to be either the lower standard. Uh, for us, it's going to be the low volume. So I'm going to go through this. You can kind of see right now what they're going to charge us. Uh, One-time fees and then um, 
monthly campaign fee. So anywhere from $1.50 to $10, depending on how much you are sending on a monthly basis. So just understand these are some things that you need to consider. And if for whatever reason you don't get through the approval process, I've been told that you get to pay this each time you try to go through. So take that into consideration and make sure you have the correct uh, requirements. Things like the opt-in messages on your website, the opt-out in your first text, and then some of the examples. Understand if you start talking about cold messaging random people that have never reached out to you and you just think they might be interested in your service or product, um, probably not going to get approved. So think about that when you're submitting stuff. It should be people that have opted in, they're reaching out to you, whether you're running ads or doing social media, but they're reaching out to you first, then you're touching base with them. That'd be my recommendation. Uh, so I'm going to go through here and register on the low volume side and I'll kind of share as I go along here. Okay, I'm just pulling this up real quick because as I started to go through it, this is very similar to the other one that we did with CallRail. Um, essentially going to need, obviously, tax ID, details, address, uh, contact information, and then submit it. Um, but one thing to note is the uh, page that we were at before said 6,000 messages was considered uh, that low volume, but now it's saying 3,000 per segment, depending on trust score. So, you know, take that in consideration when you start answering questions. Just take note that that says 3,000 before it said six. Obviously, this is saying by segment, but um, take that into account. And then um, I'm going to start filling this through, and I'll just pop back up as I go through some of the questions uh, through this. Okay, uh, something unique that just kind of came up is whatever third party they use to uh, search the EIN numbers, it was unable to locate ours. So I'm going to have to actually switch to a customer profile. Uh, you may be able to continue through here. Um, but it is just telling you that uh, whatever the EIN number is that you're using, make sure if you create a customer profile, it all matches. Um, so addresses and all those things uh, need to be the same as what was filed. So I'm going to go through and start creating the customer profile and see what I can do to get this approved. All right, so was able to create the profile and everything. Um, I will say the website link that I gave happens to be uh, where our terms of service are. Uh, that outlines that they are giving consent uh, to receive text messages whenever they're filling out web forms, reaching support place and orders, scheduling calls, et cetera. Um, that's a thing that was recommended to me uh, by someone else is making sure that they have an easy way to, to identify where you're telling them essentially that they're opting in to receive text messages. Um, so that is what was done here. Uh, I'm gonna do the low volume um, simply saying 6,000 messages per day, uh, 2,000 per segment for T-Mobile. Um, for us at this point in time, it's gonna be enough. Um, we do a lot of uh, just follow-ups here and there. Don't do a ton of mass texting, so I don't see the need right now to do the standard size um, at some point, maybe. But right now, this is what we're smitten. I just wanted to kind of show you what that would look like once you got through everything and would go ahead and click register after you agree to everything. All right, um, after doing the Registration for the brand itself, um, you have to come down to the campaign section. Uh, you can see here there's some different uh, selections. Um, I'm just doing the low volume mixed. Uh, obviously, there's some different um, options and different price points per month of what you would get charged based off of some of the max number of uh, text messages that you might send out. So make sure you pick the you know correct one that makes sense for what you're providing. Uh, for us on this specific one, uh, it'll wind up being low volume uh, mixed. Uh, we don't send a ton through this uh, specific account. Um, there are other accounts where we do more of a mass uh, text about different sales and things to a larger list, and that would not be a low volume mix. But uh, this one will work out for that. Um, you can see creating a message. And then we just have to go through the description and... Um, Give some samples of what that looks like, some of the opt-out language. Uh, will we have links included in some of the stuff? Yes. Uh, and then where do they opt in and what do they see knowing that they're consenting to receive text messages? We don't have any type of opt-in keywords where they can say, hey, subscribe or start, whatever the case may be, uh, in order to start their uh, subscription to that campaign. Uh, they just fill out their, their information, their phone number when they're placing their order, filling out a web form from the website, uh, reach out to support or scheduling a appointment phone call. Uh, that's how we're getting them on there. So this is what I'm submitting through here. Um, this will be the last step uh, and then picking the phone numbers through it. 
uh, to send it in for support uh, to review it and send it off to the carriers for review. Okay, so after submission, here we are. Um, everything's going to be submitted. And at this point, we're pending. We gotta wait until we get a response. Uh, once I get a response on anything that needs to be maybe changed, adjusted, for whatever reason, it doesn't get uh, sent through approval, I will uh, update it up in the uh, notes section or comment section uh, of the description of the uh, video. And then um, if I have to, I'll do a follow-up video or follow-up uh, short uh, video just to kind of explain what any, if any adjustments they requested and what the solution was to finally get it approved. Um, but this is what I've seen from others, making sure that you have uh, the opt-out language in the examples that you're sending in. Make sure that your website has proper opt-in language so that they're consenting to uh, receiving text messages. And uh, typically you are reaching out and responding to people that are uh, reaching out for you for a product or service. You're not just cold text messaging random people, um, especially with what we're doing and some of the uh, wording that we use here in the different campaign types. So uh, any questions? comments, concerns, feel free to throw it uh, down below the video and we'll update as we kind of go through these different phone platforms and go through the approval uh, process. See you on the next video.